but what's, what's so important about the Christmas story? And here's what it is. It's that God had a plan how to redeem every single person on planet Earth. And, and we all have a choice whether to be redeemed or not. It's, it's almost the same choice. You know what? We have a, a choice to receive a gift or not. And my guess is that 100% of the people here, if I were to announce on the table out there, there's a gift. Every one of you would come by. Even Mike would come by. But isn't it amazing that, that God, the best giver of any gift, sometimes people refuse to accept his gift. And so I want to look at several things from, from the scripture. Micah chapter 5. You know the verse. Don't need to turn to it. But thou, Bethlehem Ephrath, Though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee he shall come forth unto me, that is to be the ruler in Israel whose goings forth have been from old and from everlasting. In other words, it will come from Bethlehem. It was a plan of God from the very beginning. And then in the book of Luke, Luke chapter 2, notice just a, a couple of verses. And uh, this is in beginning in verse 10. And the angel said unto them, Fear not. Behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. Notice that not just the Jewish people, not just the people of Bethlehem, but to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You will find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. I think we'll stop our reading there, because what I'd like to do is to talk a little bit about Bethlehem and uh, the, the idea of the birthplace of the Messiah. And the reason why I want to spend just a few minutes on, on this city is because it was selected by God. And I think some of you know that there's more than one Bethlehem in Israel. But there's one that's called Bethlehem Ephrath. And it's a very special reason. You'll find it in, in Genesis chapter 35. I'm not going to take time to, to del dwell with that this morning, but it's an important one. But Bethlehem was a place of the Messiah. And here's what I like about it, because you see, really, when you say Bethlehem, you're saying this, you're saying the house of bread. And what I like about the idea of Bethlehem is this. Remember there was a great story about Ruth and Naomi. And how that, that Naomi and her husband, they, they left Bethlehem because there was a famine. Can you imagine that a famine would come to the house of bread? So you know if a city is called the house of bread, they must have really been good at growing crops. And they must have been expert at, at crushing the grain and, and making bread. But there was a famine in the house of bread. And so as a result of that, remember that Naomi and her husband, they, they left and when they're, when they're away, they, they end up in Moab. And that's how Ruth comes into the family of God. I say into the family of God because she not only married Boaz, but she became the great, great, great grandfather, grand, grandmother, grandmother of King David. And the great, 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 great grandmother of the Messiah. All because the house of bread had a famine. And you know what? I look around the families today and, and there's a famine. There's a spiritual famine going on, isn't there? And so to me it's wonderful because you see, Jesus is this. He's the bread of life. And so Bethlehem means house of bread and here's the, the bread of life. And guess what God does? God puts the bread of life in the manger. The word manger is only used one time in the Bible. And it has to do with the birth of Christ. Now, I know we normally picture a, a wooden manger, but I can guarantee you this, that in Bethlehem it would not have been a wooden manger because wood was so valuable, so you'd use it for special furniture, but you'd never use it to feed an animal. And so really, the Lord Jesus was put into a stone manger. And, and that's why it was such a sign to the shepherds. Who in their right mind would have a baby born and put the baby in a stone manger? I can guarantee you, nobody here would put your baby that way, would you? Even when it cries four or five hours a night, you usually wrap it up tighter. No, you wake up your spouse and say, it's your turn. But, but so, so here he is, the house of bread, and he's put in the manger, he's put in the feeding trough. But Bethlehem doesn't end there. You know what? It's not only the bread of life, but it's the water of life. I remember a, a wonderful story about Bethlehem. Remember when David was king? And David, after a great victory, he said, wow, he said, I just wish I had some water from the well in Bethlehem. So Bethlehem was not, not only known as the house of bread, it had a, a spring that was really good. And when King David 
was king. And after a great battle, you might think he might be thinking of a, a Sonic Burger or a Freddy's. No. He said, if I just had a drink from the well at Bethlehem. And he didn't command it. He could have. He was a king. He didn't command it. But some of his soldiers heard him say that. You know what they did? They risked their lives. They, they went through the enemy forces. They got a drink of water for King David. They brought it back and said, here's the drink you wanted. He's so overwhelmed by this water from Beth I mean, he just thought it. He just spoke it. Maybe to him and God alone. But a soldier said, no. Whatever the king wishes, that's my demand. And remember, David pours that out as a drink offering unto the Lord. And so Bethlehem is the house of bread. And Jesus is the bread of life. And Jesus is the, the water of life. But there's another thing I like about this. Because you see, there was a message that came from Bethlehem. And I like it because it said, The angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. Isn't that wonderful? That, that was not a Jewish savior born. That was a savior for all mankind. And he chose to do it in a, in a very special place, a little teeny place. Lately, in the last year or so, I've been studying something called the House of David and the City of David and, and its connection to Bethlehem. And the connection is so overwhelming. And, and every time God has an incredible lesson. But he did that because there's the message of life. The message of life was this, that a, a, a redeemer, a savior had been born God wanted it to be so that every person would be welcome to come. And so he went to the outcast. You know, the shepherds really were outcast. We read in the Old Testament, it was an abomination to be a shepherd. And so he didn't go to the high and mighty. He didn't go to the, the Hollywood elect. He went to the shepherds and he invites them to come. And he invites all of us to come as well, doesn't he? So there was the message of life. And then there was the lamb of life. Already in the song and in the message the little kids have had, you know the story because you see there weren't ordinary shepherds that were in Bethlehem. They were called Levitical shepherds or priestly shepherds. Some of you know this because I've talked about it so many times over the last two years, but for those who are maybe visiting, you see Jerusalem had so many sheep that were slaughtered on the Passover, they couldn't grow enough lambs. So Bethlehem was not only a house of bread, it not only had a great well, it had Levitical shepherds, shepherds that grew sheep, bread sheep, especially for the Passover. And so what they would do, because they were so important to make sure that the, the lamb had no blemish, was spotless, was perfect. So when the shepherds would see a lamb that was born, they would wrap that lamb up because you see, this is a cave. It's like a shepherd's cave. And just like the tomb of Jesus, it was hewn out because it would start as a solid piece of rock. They would take out a, a square. They would put it on top and that would become the building. Take another square and, and pretty soon you'd have a building on top and you'd have a cave down here. That was the, the stable for the animals. And so in the cave, there would be sharp edges all around. And those lambs, if they got a nick on their ear, if they got a nick on their leg, if, if they just got smashed against the side, they would be unacceptable as the Passover lamb. And so here's what the Levitical shepherds did. They took every one of those lambs that were going to be a Passover lamb, they wrapped it up in swaddling clothes. So when the message came by the angels to the shepherds, said, hey, go and, and look for a child that's in a feed trough and wrapped up in lamb's clothes, they said, we got to go see this sign. Wow. Do you see how God orchestrated this? But you see, there were two uses for swaddling clothes. Both of them signified death. One, if you were a lamb wrapped in swaddling clothes, when they wrapped the lamb up in swaddling clothes, it was a sign, this lamb is going to die. And when a person was dead at the graveside, they'd wrap him in swaddling clothes, and it said, this person is dead. And so the angels not only announced the birth, but they announced the birth of a lamb that would die and of a savior that would die on the cross for my sins and for your sins. And so he's the lamb of life as well, isn't he? And then there's another thing that I'm reminded about Bethlehem and, and, um, and these lambs that were born to die, well, they would give way to gifts for a king. You see, it's interesting that the, the wise men came and last week, Mark gave a, a wonderful lesson. I'm going to come back to this one here in a minute. These, these gifts of gold and frankincense and, and myrrh. 
but just for a moment let's let's go because it's interesting because the, when the wise men came um, I know I may bust your bubble but they didn't follow the star read it carefully they saw a star now last week we, we learned in, in the message that Mark gave that they were from Persia and we saw that Daniel was captain over the, the astrologers and the wise men and I believe that Daniel taught them some things about the scripture you know what they did they followed the scripture and they found the star bear me out for just a second because remember the story is told in Daniel book of Daniel prophetic book interesting book chapter 9 and there God told to Daniel things that will happen when the Messiah would come and he talked about 490 years and he said something special will happen at the end of 400 three le or seven less than that 483 years and the wise men knew they were coming that, that the plan of God was coming they followed the scripture they saw a star in the east and it reappeared in Bethlehem and they go there because they followed the the incredible words of God it wasn't three wise men last last week we, we there were three gifts but usually those wise men traveled in caravans between 30 and 300 people so when they came to Herod Herod was afraid they said we're here to see the king we're here to see the king that was announced hundreds of years ago and Herod says wow I, I thought I was the king and so Herod goes into a little bit of a fit now I, I just want you to, to see this that when the when these wise men came you know what they did they they brought their brains they had to figure out what God was saying in his word you know what there's some people today and they listen to the Christmas story and, and they leave their, their brains at the back because they need to understand God had an incredible plan and, and, and we need to think through the plan of God they also they brought their bank book yeah you know what they did they gave to him gifts I want to go back to those gifts because those, those gifts are incredible gold suitable for a king I if you would have 30 to a to hundred or 200 men that came that far do you think they had a that you think they had a pot of gold I do I don't think Mary and Joseph had any problem paying their taxes I don't think they had any problem living I don't think they had any trouble fleeing to Egypt why because they they gave them gold they gave them frankincense frankincense I won't take the time today other than to say it's associated with, with the priest it has to do with the smell it was always with a sacrifice it was an incredible smell that sweetened every sacrifice myrrh myrrh it was a burial thing it's associated with the prophets you see what they were saying that we need to bring him gifts that are suitable for a prophet a priest and a king and Jesus was all of those and then what is interesting to me they go to Herod and now Herod Herod had quite an ego matter of fact I'm going to show you another picture because see the place that says Herodian well Herod said anyone can build a castle or a palace and by the way I think he had 11 he said I, I don't want another palace but he said no one can build a mountain so he built a mountain so he took the, a mountain close to that he took the top off and he made the Herodian and then he put a palace on that just to show you what he could do and so when the wise men come I don't know if they were in the Herodian or if they were in his palace but I know this sooner or later because he asked the, the chief priest he said where would the Messiah be born and they said the scriptures say the prophets say in Bethlehem so the wise men go to Bethlehem and there they see the star above the house that the child is in and I'm sure that if Herod was in Jerusalem I bet he went to the Herodian three miles away from Bethlehem right under his nose he's looking for the baby and the wise men escape and Jesus escapes and you know what Herod does he orders the murder of children see he missed it three miles away and he missed Christmas you know what you can miss Christmas because you see the wise men came searching and they were open to receive and, and I hope that you as well come searching and looking for it here's what it says about Herod it said that he sought diligently the information concerning the birth of the of the king and then it said he sought diligently to find him diligently he sought it for destruction not because he wanted to receive it he he sought because he thought you know what if this baby is my competition I'm gonna destroy it 
And then there's another one. Bethlehem reminds me of the unspeakable gift. The best gift is not under the tree. The best gift was on a tree. It's the Lord Jesus. You see, you can have an incredible gift, and, and if that gift is the most incredible gift that you've ever dreamed of, and you never unwrap it, the gift does you no good. And, and you can have a, an expensive gift, a, a, wonderful, a, a lifetime occupation of mind to have this, and if you never receive it, it does you no good. And do you understand that Jesus came as a gift? The Bible says it's unspeakable. There, there's no word to describe how great he is, and it all began in Bethlehem. So let me ask you this. That little baby that was put there in Bethlehem in a miracle way, taxes at just the right time, Famines at just the right time. Wise men at just the right t Everything. God's perfect timing. You know what it says in, in Galatians? In the fullness of time. When the fullness of time was come. God gave his son. And he gave us that gift. Let me ask you this. Have you ever received it? An incredible gift. And it has your name on it. Because here's what it says. Whosoever will may come. And so I don't, I don't know what your condition is today. But I know this that it's just as important for you to receive this little baby that was born in a special way as it was for the wise men to find him, as for the shepherds to find him. He is the bread of life. And he was born in the house of bread. He is the water of life. He was from the city that had an incredible well. He is the lamb of life. He was the, Passover, he was the original Passover lamb. He was wrapped in swaddling clothes so you'd know he was born to die. He was wrapped in swaddling clothes so you knew that he was going to die for our sins. He was born in the right place prophesied by, by God all the way back in the book of Daniel, all the way back in the book of Micah, exactly as God said, here it is. And he did all that. You want to know why? Because he wanted you to know today it's not an accident. God had a plan. And his plan was to make it so that no person, no person would not know how to come and accept Christ as their Savior. Have you ever done that? Because you see, that's what makes Christmas real. I don't know about you, but when you walk by these stores in the mall and they got these Christmas trees and about 50 presents under them, I'm not very interested. But when you go to one and it's got your name on it, you say, okay, now we're talking. Yeah. And guess what? Jesus is a gift and it has your name on it receive him today if you never have there's a song that is associated with this it's on page number 145 and so little town of Bethlehem and and we want to close our meeting today and sing that and uh, yeah. on number 145 don't happen to have a songbook we've got the words there oh, oh little town of Bethlehem how still we see the light
Father, we're so glad that you chose, even before the foundations of the earth were formed, to send a Redeemer, to send a Savior. And Father, what a plan that he would be born into the right family, that he would be born really into poverty, because that way every single person would be able to, to seek him and touch him and to receive him. And Father, today, 2,000 years later, there's still some who, like Herod, stand three miles off. And some, Father, stand maybe right next to the, to the manger. But Father, thank God for those who receive him as their Savior. We're so thankful for those like the wise men, and they, they sought him out. They, they looked for him, and they journeyed for him, a, a long, hard journey. They found the true king, the real Messiah. Father, I pray today that there might be some here that will search him out and receive him. Thanks be to God for his unspeakable gift. Thank you for salvation in Christ. We pray, Lord, that this might be a, a real blessed Christmas for us, one of which we put Christ in his proper place in all that we do and say. So we give you thanks in his name. Amen.